Seems I added the secret ingredient. This just might be the time. Scan. Analyzing. Perfection. Magnificent. 10.38 a.m. I've successfully created the greatest sandwich of all time. And it only took 484 tries. Whew! Checkers! I only eat sandwiches that are cut into halves! You know this! I can't risk cutting it, Snoozer. I need to... Something precise, yes! The cool tool? Yee-hee! Yikes. Note to self, don't cut peanut butter and jelly sandwich with cool tool. <sighs> well, snooze we're gonna have to eat later. What are you playing with there? I'm playing with my toys, Winter and Hope. Oh yeah, I haven't seen these guys in a little while. Why is Winter's tail white? Hmm? Oh, that's Winter's prosthetic tail, Snoozer. Prosthetic what? You've never heard of Winter's prosthetic tail? I didn't know that, Snoozer. No, I thought it was a decoration. Anyway, where are we going today? Well, I'll tell you what, Snoozer. You just gave me a great idea for today's reading road trip. Seatbelts. Check. Backpack? Check, check. All right, snoozer. Ascending in three, two, one. And we're off. Autopilot activated. So where are we going today? All right, Snoozer, you know what? I think it is time for our three hints. Hint number one. It is really big. Hint number two. It is full of water. And hint number three. It holds some of the smartest animals on Earth. The aquarium? You got it, Snoozer. We're going to an aquarium. This aquarium is a little bit different than the last aquarium we went to. This aquarium has dolphins. Real ones? That's right, Snoozer, real dolphins. In fact, it might even have one of the dolphins that you were talking about today. Winter and Hope? That's right, Snoozer, Winter and Hope, the two dolphins you were playing with today, they live in Clearwater Aquarium. Checkers, you silly goose. Winter and Hope are toys. They live on your adventure desk. Yeah, Winter is a toy snoozer, but they made that toy of a real-life dolphin. Winter. Winter is real? My mind is blown! Yeah, Winter's a real dolphin. It's going to be amazing to meet her today because she's such a famous animal, and she's got all sorts of friends that you get to meet, too. I can't believe this is happening right now! Wowie! This is going to be the best day ever! Yeah, this is going to be an amazing trip today because Clearwater Aquarium doesn't just have dolphins. They also have other animals that would live in the ocean. Really? Absolutely. Lots and lots of different animals occupy the oceans. Of course, we know about dolphins and sharks and octopuses and whales, lots of those animals. But there's a lot of other animals that do occupy oceans that we don't think about every day. Oceans are a very curious thing to learn about because over 70% of the Earth is covered by ocean. Yet we can't breathe underwater on our own, and oceans are really, really deep. So most of the oceans are unexplored. Really? Yeah. Snoozer, do you know the average depth of the Pacific Ocean is 12,100 feet? Imagine that. That's like 10 Empire State Buildings. Oh my gosh! What's the 
Empire State Building. You know, the, the, the big building in New York City? You know, the one King Kong claims? <laughs> Inaccurate. King Kong is a fictional character. So the ocean really is deep. Do you think I could swim that deep? No way. 12,100 is just the average, the middle. That means there are some parts of the ocean that are even deeper, much deeper in the ocean's case. The deepest part that anyone has ever explored is 35,858 feet in the Pacific Ocean. That is as deep as the water gets on Earth. If you don't have any vehicle to protect you from the extreme pressure, then you can't travel nearly that far down. The record for any individual is only 1,752 feet, but they had a special suit on. Being that deep would be scary. Oh yeah, that's why you need to spend a lot of time practicing and training. Well, I'm going to get the record for the deepest any robot vacuum has ever traveled into the ocean. I'm going to do one billion feet deep. Seriously, the entire earth is only 41 million feet deep, so you just go right through the earth. Here we go. Ah! Ah! Oh, oopsie. Then I'll go to the very bottom of the ocean. Well, there you go, snoozer. Oh, that's a much more realistic goal. You know where you can start, though? Just by reading books, learning more about the ocean, all the animals that live there, and while you're traveling down at the bottom of the ocean, maybe you can make some animal friends. Like what? What about an octopus? Yes! I really like octopuses. They have eight arms. I don't have any arms, so they have eight more arms than me. Oh yeah, octopuses are super interesting to learn about. Now everybody knows they have eight arms, but there's a lot more to them. We can learn about that by reading books and by asking Zot. Zot, can you give us some information about octopuses? Zot, the robot, at your service. Activating excited voice. Octopuses can squeeze into tight spaces as they are invertebrates, which means they have no skeleton. An octopus has a heart beak, like a parrot beak, which they use to break into and eat their prey, such as crabs and shellfish. The largest octopus is believed to be the giant Pacific octopus, which weigh up to 15 kilograms, or 33 pounds. It has an arm span up to 4.3 meters, or 14 feet. Goodbye. Thanks, Ot. Well, how about that? That was really fun. You know octopuses have like a, a beak, like a parrot? No, I thought they had a smiley mouth. That's how I draw them. No, actually, it's really hard to see from certain angles, but they do actually have a beak on their body. Nice! Yeah, alright, let's pull up the map. We are headed for Rainbow Way. Once we cross through, we'll be right at our destination. Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Along the way, we're going to get a health tip from Dr. Dan and your teacher, Mrs. Hamilton, is going to do an octopus craft with you. Oh boy! I get to make my very own octopus! Woohoo! Oh, snoozer! Here come the books! Let's check out a few. What'd we get? Here you go, snoozer. Oscar the Octopus, a book about the months of the year by Matthew Van Fleet. And a tale of a true friendship, Dolphin Tale by Emma Ryan. Well, it's great that we were talking about octopuses, snoozer, because now we've got a book about them. Now this book has an octopus in it, it's got the habitat the octopus lives in, teaches us the different months of the year, and it has different animals that live in the ocean. And that's great for today because we're talking about all sorts of animals that actually live in the ocean. We see a lot of animals, but I'm not going to show you all of them, Snoozer, because this is a flat book, meaning Oscar's legs can be removed to reveal what animal is on each page. Sort of a surprise. So what animal will make an appearance in this book? We'll just have to read and find out. I love that they feature other animals that live in the ocean, not just the main character. Oscar the octopus in this case. 
and I really like the cartoony, colorful illustrations. Everything just pops out at you. This is a great book to read and a tool to help us remember the months of the year. I know the months of the year. I went to Mrs. Hamilton's school all year, and we sang a song every day to remember it. Now I'm really smart. Awesome, Snoozer. But remember, people learn in many, many different ways. And for some people, learning about the months of the year using animals can be a great tool. If you're a little bit older and you already know the months of the year, just like you, Snoozer, you can look at this book in a different way and just appreciate the cartoon and fun illustrations. But I'm really glad you mentioned Mrs. Hamilton because I think it's about time we bring on Mrs. Hamilton and make your octopus craft. What do you think about that? Yes! All right, let's bring on Mrs. Hamilton and make your octopus craft. Well, hello, Snoozer. Are you ready to get started? Hi, Mrs. Hamilton. Yes, I am. Oh, that's great to hear. Well, the octopus we're making today looks like this. So we need these two sheep, and I think I'm going to start right here with the big rectangle. I'm going to cut the whole thing out first, and then the strips. Okay, I think I'm all set. So half what it's going to look like. So first I'm going to get the head all set and then we'll add the legs. We just need some glue. And I'll put a little glue on here. Make sure you get these ends so they don't stick up. Okay, now have the face all set up, then turn it around. And then decide where you're gonna place the legs. Okay, I think I'm ready for the big reveal. That's how mine looks, how does yours look? Here's what I did! Ah, I love it. All right, well, I had a great time, and I'll see you next time. Bye. And now, the question of the week. How deep do you think the ocean is? Check us. Like, I think the ocean is one million and a hundred feet, feet down. Bye, check us. How deep? Ten million. It's, it's deep. Nice. I just wait, wait. How deep is the water? I think it's a hundred feet down. My jackals. Five million thousand feet deep. Okay. Because it's really, really deep. How deep do you think the ocean is? Um, 5,000 feet deep. Um, how deep is the ocean? I can tell you. It's 100 feet down, I think. I have this seahorse, and I think they're in the, wa the ocean, too. Bye, checkers! Thanks for joining us for The Question of the Week. Nice. Whoa, what is that? Oh, this? I gave him a beak, remember? <laughs> Snoozer, not like that kind of beak. That looks like a half octopus, half pelican. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the other book. A Tale of True Friendship, Dolphin Tale. Now this book is based on a true story. And it's for older readers who read it by themselves. And for younger readers, they can have someone read it to them. Now this story was made into a film called Dolphin Tale. A dolphin named Winter loses her tail in a crab trap. 
and it's up to a young boy named Sawyer and the staff at Clearwater Marine Aquarium to help her survive. Sawyer, the main human character, has a special bond with Winter the Dolphin, and Sawyer has an idea to have a doctor make Winter a prosthetic tail. Will Winter swim again? What will happen next? We'll just have to read this book and find out. Oh, I feel so bad for Winter! She lost her tail! Well, the good news is for Winter, she has a lot of people around her supporting her. Dolphins are one of the most intelligent animals. Now, people talk about animals being intelligent a lot, but for dolphins, it's absolutely true. They have big brains, they can show emotion, and create real bonds with people. Now, they don't really look like human beings the way an ape does, but they're a lot more like us than we think. I thought they were just big fishies! No, dolphins are actually mammals, and they're really closely related to us. Well, us meaning me. You're more in the robot vacuum category. Yes! I find that I'm very closely related to Roomba. Hi, how are you doing, Roomba? So which model are you again? Oh my gosh, so how are the kids doing? We need to get together more often. We never do this anymore. But seriously, dolphins can play tricks on humans. They're very playful. So it makes a lot of sense to have a story with a human and a dolphin being friends together. And this story has all sorts of themes of friendship, compassion, and Winter's story is certainly inspirational, and we can learn a lot from it. And next time we go to the library, we can check out more books about dolphins and all sorts of animals that live in the sea. But you know what? Zot, can you give us some more information about dolphins? Zot, the robot, at your service, activating excited voice. Dolphins are marine mammals that are closely related to whales and porpoises. Dolphins are part of the family of toothed whales that includes orcas and pilot whales. They are mammals and breathe through a blowhole at the top of their head. There are almost 40 species of dolphin, and they are found worldwide, mostly in shallow waters along continental shelves. Dolphins are carnivores, mostly eating fish and squid. Dolphins live in social groups from five to several hundred. Goodbye. Thanks, Ot. Well, Snoozer, they actually made a second film called Dolphin Tale 2, and they made a book to tie in with that called Hope for Winter. And this story centers around Winter's friendship with a dolphin named Hope. And those two actually live together at Clearwater Aquarium. So those are two great books to read that feature dolphins, but if we can't find those exact stories about Winter and Hope, there are many, many other books in the library all about dolphins. Hey Zot! What other ocean animal books do we have to talk about? Zot, the robot at your service. Today's selections are... Shark Lady, the true story of how Eugene Clark became the ocean's most fearless scientist by Jess Keating, Ocean Animals, Who's in the Deep Blue, by Joanna Rizzo, Gentle Giant Octopus, by Karen Wallace, Free Willy, by Nancy E. Krulik, Amazing Whales, by Sarah L. Thompson, Sharks, by Seymour Simon, Books featuring ocean animals, Goodbye. Whales! I almost forgot about them! Oh yeah, whales are the largest animal in the entire animal kingdom. And of course, there's many different kinds of whales. The blue whale, the humpback whale, the sperm whale, just to name a few. What is the biggest? Ah, that would be the blue whale, snoozer. Which weighs as much as 33 elephants and is up to 98 feet long. How about that? Oh no! Do you think they would eat me? No, no. Blue whales are known to stay away from humans. And snoozers, for that matter. Animals usually like to stay away from humans. Especially animals that live under the sea. They don't really know us very well. It's best to leave whales alone, just like many, many other animals. Did you know? About 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by oceans. The Pacific Ocean's name has an original meaning of peaceful sea. During winter, the Arctic Ocean is almost completely covered in sea ice. The Pacific Ocean contains around 25,000 different islands. Many more than are found in other oceans. The library has tons of books about oceans.
questions. Visit the library to learn more. Well, Snoozer, we're getting pretty close to the rainbow, but have you been thinking about any questions that you want to ask Dr. Dan? Hmm, I was thinking. All these animals spend so much time outside. There's no houses underwater. That's what we should ask Dr. Dan. Why it's important to spend time outside. Well, that's a great question, Snoozer. Well, let's bring on Dr. Dan right now to answer your question. Hey, Snoozer, I'm so happy that you are talking about spending time outside because that is one of the best and easiest ways to stay healthy. Being outside is great for lots of things regarding our health. One of them is the sun, and we actually talked about that a couple trips ago. Remember you went to see the parrots and the gorillas? Yes! Yeah, so when we're spending time outside, we get all of that sunlight, and remember, that releases vitamin D throughout our body and makes us super healthy. Another great thing we can do is exercise outside. We actually talked about that recently too. Remember we talked about the cheetah and how fast it was? Well, there's so many great things we can do outside to get exercise. Of course, running is one of them, but we can also walk, we can play basketball, play volleyball, swimming, jumping rope. There's an unlimited amount of things we can do outside to get plenty of exercise. Just remember to always get that one hour of exercise a day. Another great thing we can do outside is reading. Now, Snoozer, what books did you have today to read on your journey? We talked about Oscar the Octopus and A Tale of True Friendship. Oh, those are great books. You're really going to enjoy them. Well, a great thing you can do outside is get a nice comfortable chair, pull up a book, and read. Not only are you getting all that wonderful sun on your skin and breathing all that fresh air, but you're also exercising your mind by reading. All right, Snoozer, we'll enjoy your time outside. Just as always, wear that sunscreen and stay hydrated. Well, thanks, Dr. Dan. Snoozer, we're at the rainbow. Once we cross through this rainbow, we're gonna be meeting Winter the Dolphin and all her friends at Clearwater Aquarium. But if we wanna cross through the rainbow, we need to be wearing our safety suits. So get ready, Snoozer, changing into our safety suits. Going through the rainbow. Wow, Snoozer, we arrived! We're at Clearwater Aquarium. Let's head inside and meet with Winter the Dolphin. Snoozer, look how many people Winter has inspired. Wow. Clearwater Aquarium has seven resident dolphins who are unable to be released to the wild. Today, we are meeting with Winter, who is really good at following directions, Hope, who likes to play games, Nicholas, who is very curious, PJ, who loves to hang around Winter, and Hemingway, who is very playful. Hi, Winter! Wow, you're an amazing swimmer. I bet I'd be a really good swimmer, but I've never tried it. I don't have a tail, but I have a trunk. I bet I could spin it around and go really fast. So Winter only uses her prosthetic tail when she's training. So right now, she's going to swim by moving her body back and forth, which is unusual for a dolphin. And that's Winter's friend PJ. They're bonded, and they spend a lot of time together. Hi, Nicholas! Do that! Let's head up now and meet the dolphins. Looks like it's feeding time! Yum yum yum! Wait! 
and back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> Great job! Hope! That's hope! Nice catch, Checkers! And nice pass, Hope! You should play for the Miami Dolphins! All right, snoozer, it's time to go. Bye-bye! And now it's time for... The Joke of the Week! Why did the dolphin cross the road? To get to the other tide? <laughs> it wasn't a library joke, but it was a dolphin joke. And it was pretty funny, right? You know what, Checkers? I think dolphins are now my favorite animal. I'm gonna have to redo my entire list! Oh, I don't blame you, Snoozer. What an amazing time we had, getting to meet Winter the Dolphin and learn all the stories and amazing inspiration that they have going on at Clearwater. Such a great place. Very interesting. Yeah, and you know what? At some point, we're going to have to talk a little bit more about some of the things they are doing there to help rehabilitate, help those animals out, and get them back into the wild. They do such fantastic work. And I am thrilled that we now have two books featuring Winter and all the dolphins of Clearwater Aquarium to read about and learn more about their stories. And it gets me excited to read more books about the ocean because so many animals, so many great things to see. I just can't wait to talk more about it. Cool. I can't wait. Absolutely, Snoozer, but right now we need to head home and get ready for our next reading road trip. <laughs>